Welcome to PNE Pod, the official podcast of the one and only Preston North End Football Club. My name's Niall McCorn. And I'm Neil Mellor. We'll be chatting to some North End legends, some current first team players, some famous fans, and some former teammates of mine. And you mentioned legends there, Mills. They don't get much more legendary than today's guest, who is Alex Bruce. Alex Bruce. 171 th- North End goals. I thought I scored a few, but he scored miles more <laughs> than me. And, and you know, it was really interesting to hear what it was like for him scoring so many for North End. Yeah, absolutely. Played under some great managers as well during his time at Deepdale and never really wanted to leave. He had a season at Newcastle, but he always wanted to stay, didn't he? Yeah, uh, and what's interesting is he's Scottish, yet Preston's his club and his family as well. The fact that he stayed here and still supports the club around the football club shows what it meant to him. Yeah, it was a fascinating chat with one of the most legendary North End players there's ever been, Alex Bruce. Delighted to say that our latest guest on PNE Pod is a true legend of North End, a man who scored so many goals in a white shirt. Alex Bruce is here. Great to see you, Alex. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Proper North End goal scorer. A proper one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know how many goals a you puncher. got? Do you know how many goals you got? Um, I made it 172 league and cup, uh, 157 were in the league. Unbelievable. Yeah, incredible. Were you the sort of person that looked out for the stats and always had like a journal who you scored um, against and all of that sort of thing? Um, not really, no. I've, um, I mean, I kept, obviously kept the tally my goals and type of thing, but I was a bit greedy. It's weird. You know, when you get a bit obsessive, you, you won't, won't put the ball in the back of the net. Uh, and that, but I always thought that well, I wasn't great at a lot of things, but it, so I concentrated on uh, playing in the penalty box. Where did that come from? Because for me, I always used to count the goals I scored at school, <coughs> and from well, from a very early age. Were you the same? Always yeah. wanting to hit a certain numbers. Uh, I was, but at school, um, I played for Dundee Primary School boys, and it was right half, which was the old style like midfield. Then I went to secondary, and I played for Dundee School boys again. Uh, and they played as inside right, which was still nobody would play as centre forward or up front. And even when it come to North End, they wouldn't play as up front when it was 15, 16, um, 17, 18. And it was still like, play as up front and that. But they never play as up front. I was nine stone two when I signed, <laughs> uh, when I was 15. And I never put on any weight. Uh, and that. and so um, when I was in Diggs, and they said, well, you need, you need to beef you up a bit and get a bit taller than that. Um, so they come up with this thing that every day the landlady was with, they had to have a raw egg. It was only like 15. <laughs> and I was getting up and I'd say, like, toast for breakfast, please. Uh, and just say, you've got to have your raw egg first, raw eggs. And it was like mixing raw eggs. Sounds and, horrendous. Yeah, and this was... Well, into this, a drink, this, Alex? Into yeah, a, just with yeah. the raw egg and I had to drink it. And this come through the physio of thinking it would me to put weight on because it was only 1902. <laughs> Uh, and that, so even when I got in the reserves at um, North End, they were still like the old inside forward uh, position. Then eventually I got up front. And that, so it was about 18, 17, 18 before they started playing us up front. That's mad, isn't it? So someone who's been such a, a renowned goal scorer <coughs> to have not maybe been hitting 50s, 60s, 70s, maybe 100 yeah. goals as a young kid. Yeah. It was only when you got to North End in and around the first team when you became a centre forward. Yeah. Yeah, when well, they got in North End's reserve, they, they started playing us up front uh, and then eventually got transferred to Newcastle. And then when they got to Newcastle, which I know you're going to mention after, um, they were playing as midfield. They wouldn't play us up front. And yet they signed us as a striker, you know what I mean? Mm. But I wasn't good enough anyway to get in the team there. They, they had a fantastic forward line. Uh, but they were still playing as midfield. And then eventually when I left Newcastle, came back to Preston, um, Harry Catterick was the manager then and that, they started playing as midfield again and I was like I mean, you know it's like you, I mean, you play out a position it's just it's, not your position it's, yeah. <laughs> and I'm, playing midfield I mean if you're a striker who wants to play in midfield you know? I know what you strikers are like as well you don't score for a couple of games and you start sweating you're there <coughs> in the changing rooms like when's my next one com- coming yeah. were you like that as well um, yeah it was a bit like that yeah uh, and like, you, you do wonder sometimes if you, if you hit a, a barn run uh, and that you think when's the next goal coming but you've just got to keep getting in there keep getting in the box what was a barren run for you how many games uh, I think the worst I ever went I think it was seven or eight eight games uh, 
I did ten. Once. I did ten once. Did you? And I blamed oh, the physio because he he, took, he sent me to a psychologist well, he, and went, "Oh, we're going to see a psychologist." <coughs> and the psychologist's last words to me were, "What what are you going to do if you don't score for ten games?" And I was like, "Well, that'll never happen." Well, and that was in my head, for t- and I never yeah. scored for ten games. But you didn't. Because in every free kick and every set piece, you're like, "I'm having this." Every <laughs> single one after that. <laughs> uh, let's go back to what you mentioned there. <coughs> how you initially signed for North End? You grew up in Dundee in Scotland. So the first thing I want to know before we get to North End is Dundee FC or Dundee United? Um, Dundee United. Any um, any reason for that or just a family um, No, thing? I just got, like everybody, it was the first club I was dating not to watch in March. So I went to watch Dundee United. And Dundee were the big team at the time in Dundee. And Dundee United started picking up. Uh, but I, I remember uh, pre 1966, 67, 68, Go to watch them in the old Fair Cities Cup, it was called, which would be the equivalent of the one of the cups now. Uh, and I've seen them beat Barcelona at Tarnadise, Juventus, uh, and, and, that, and that was in the late 60s. And you just think, wow, full house. The ground only held 20,000 uh, and that, but the atmosphere was superb. And you think, oh, that's what I want to do, type of thing. Amazing. So in terms of you signing for North End, am I right in thinking that at the time in Scotland there was no apprenticeship? <coughs> so you didn't really have much of a choice. No. If you wanted to be a footballer as an apprentice, you had to come to England. Yeah, I think that's why so many left. Um, you only has left Scotland at the time. Um, you had to sign an S form. And like you, you were like year three, 15 year old. And it was, uh, I could have signed for Dundee, Dundee United. I went through to Rangers wanting to sign this, believe it or not. And um, you go through it and they're saying, like, come on an S form and go back to school for a year and come through on a Saturday. And you think, I'm not want to do that Saturday, Sunday. And then you get the English teams. They're asking you to come for trials. And you think, oh, that, that's where I want to go. But, you know, so you know, you, not because you want to leave school. You just want to play footy every day. What, what, why press the North End? Um, well, it's strange, really, in a way. They, they, done, they press North End scout, Jimmy Scott, lived in Dundee, but... I mean, I never knew him before the football. Um, and then I came to Manchester United, believe it or not, for the trial, and they asked us back. And I turned down Chelsea and Aston Villa. Now, it sounds daft, but my brother, who's seven years old than me, he signed for Chelsea when he was 16. So he came to London, and he was a great schoolboy footballer. And then he came back after about two seasons, ended up at St. Johnson uh, for a bit, and then... But I always thought, like, well, and my dad used to say that, and, and my brother, like, you know, you go to, if you go to London, a big city, and that, just be careful and stuff like that. But we knew that um, Jimmy Scott, the scout, lived in Dundee, and, that, and so he was started knocking on the door, uh, and that, and, he, and the reputation was that a lot, they had a lot of Scottish players, and the fans liked the Scottish players, the PNE fans, uh, and they have a good chance of, like, breaking through into the first team. What was the PNE reputation like? Back then, did you see them as sort of a, a big club? Uh, I, I'd never really heard of them, to be honest. <laughs> but, but, but Jimmy Scott, he, he brought us down for the weekend, and I went to watch a match, and I thought, oh, this is fantastic. You know, I was watching Dundee United, maybe we five, 6,000 fans. Then North End, the day I came, they had about 17,000, 18,000, which in the old details, great atmosphere. And, that, and I thought, wow, this is, this is like, you know what I mean? One of my uncles said, like, yeah, Tom Finney plays for, played for Preston. And, and so then, and, that, and they loved them up north. You know, they, they disliked every other English footballer in the north, but they loved them up north because they liked ball players and wingers. Yeah. Uh, and I remember him saying, after the war, I seen him playing at Hamden and he destroyed Scotland. And so that was the first time I started learning about Tom Finney. Is that because maybe the coverage wasn't obviously what it is nowadays? Yeah, yeah there, was, there, was, there was no coverage, really. You just got the... As you know, the, the Sporting Post Saturday night, and that was it. It's only Sir Tom who scored more league goals than you for <coughs> North End. So it's good company to be in. And actually, you became quite good friends, didn't you? Yeah, he, he was Yeah, he was really pleasant, a uh, pleasant man when I, I met him at North End. And he was always supportive. I mean, I, mean, I remember getting dropped once for not defending. Uh, and he, I could always recall it at Deepdale. Um, Bumping into him, and he says, Why are you not playing today, Brucey? Type of thing. And I said, Well, you know, God, at least I'm not defending enough and keeping the full backs in and stuff like that. And he was always supportive. He says, Well, it's not your job. He says, I was a winger. He says, At the left, right half behind me, that was their job. And behind them, there was a right back. 
he says, keep playing the way you are. So, so he was always supportive uh, and he always, you know what I mean? Did he you, was probably as greedy as me in the box. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did you ever speak about sort of the goals and think maybe <coughs> you could surpass his great total? Um, I would have liked to have done that, but um, they obviously sold us to Newcastle, which was I didn't <laughs> want to go, which was a disaster. Uh, and then when um, Gordon Lee sold us back to Preston, which I thought, yes, get back there. Um, and then when Tommy Doherty came, he only lasted a matter of weeks, and he then got sacked. And uh, after about 10 weeks, and then blow me, they, they signed Gordon Lee, who sold us back here. And I mean, Gordon Lee's a nice bloke, uh, but we just never saw eye to eye what a striker was. Uh, and that, and that Newcastle, um, he sold Malcolm McDonald and Terry Hibbert, and they were the most two attacking players on the team. And Malcolm McDonald's just different class. Uh, and that, but he sold them to Arsenal and Terry Hibbert to Birmingham. We were in the Premier League, so called Premier League at the time. Uh, and then he sold me back here and I thought, no chance. Um, or last in it now. So. But it did, it lasted two seasons under him. Neil Mellor scored. Preston take the lead. And that's exactly what it means to Neil Mellor to score in the West Lancashire derby.